Okay, for the three acute complications, we're prioritizing this because these are the three life-threatening uh, uh, com complications of diabetes. The most life-threatening among the three is which one? When we say life-threatening, what does usually is triggered? Or fight or flight, right? Yeah. Okay. So what? Which one of these three triggers the fight or flight mode? Mm -hmm. Hypoglycemia actually will kill the patient like this. DKA, yeah, they'll die, but not not this minute. Okay. HHS, same thing, not this minute. Hypoglycemia, however, you'll die like right now. Okay, not later. Plus, we'll look at the uh, signs and symptoms. Start. Let's start with the causes first because we need to know the causes. That way you can answer the questions on how to prevent it, correct? Because <clears throat> how do you avoid hypoglycemia? You have to know what causes it. So therefore, you avoid those causes, then you can prevent it. And then we'll look at signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. There are three levels. We have mild, moderate, severe, and then our actions for each one. So let's begin with what's what are the common causes? So one, it's all over. There's really no, you, you like to see tables and charts now, right? Am I right? Yeah. You agree? You're starting to appreciate tables and charts now? Yeah. Okay, so uh, still no here. Okay, so grab here. The There's no table or chart for the causes. They're all in the paragraph. So here's one. Too much insulin or oral hypoglycemic agents. Or it could be a combination of both. You have may have enough, but you eat too little food. Or increase or excessive physical activity. What's wrong with these three? Obviously, too much insulin that will drop your sugar. Or not enough food. Of course, drop your sugar. But what, what's about physical activity? Excessive physical activity. How does that cause hypoglycemia? You're burning the glucose, okay? So the cells are uptaking it so fast. So therefore, do you have enough in the blood? No. <clears throat> there are many other causes. For instance, what, what about this one? The patient um, does not time the insulin administration with food intake. Let's say they took the insulin too soon, eight one hour later or two hours later, can that cause hypoglycemia? Yes. All right, so incorrect timing, correct? Uh, what about um, ingesting alcohol without food? That's another reason, not necessarily um, listed here, but if you look it up you know, online, alcohol can cause hypoglycemia. If you drink alcohol, if you're diabetic and you don't eat before drinking alcohol, that can drop your sugar. All right. Let's go to manifestations. Again, there's mild, moderate, and severe. However, the mild, moderate, and severe here is only for the textbook. Are we clear? Because in actual practice, people tolerate hypoglycemia differently. For example, <clears throat> I've seen someone with a blood sugar of 60 who was unconscious. Meanwhile, a sugar, an uh, uh, old person uh, one time had a blood sugar and it wasn't a finger stick blood sugar it was a blood draw blood sugar was so so we had a stat um a, of course Chaponin is stat right so i was talking to him because he was having chest pain so we drew his blood it was stat <clears throat> uh, plus the doctor added uh, chemistry as well on the blood sample so the troponin was negative but then lab called me because his sugar was 25 I said, are you sure? Because this patient's right here. You can talk to the patient. Okay, so the patient was conscious, alert, and oriented. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the patients will, the, your patients will tolerate hypoglycemia differently. Uh, am I clear? Mm -hmm. So therefore, when it comes to intervention, we treat, therefore, the mild, moderate, or severe, not according to the severity, but according to the patient's yeah. tolerance. For example, here, when you say mild, supposed to be you're going to feed the patient, right? But what about the patient I had who had 60, which is mild, who was unconscious? Am I going to give her 
graham crackers and and orange juice okay so that's what i mean by we treat according to the patient's tolerance the patient's symptoms not the not necessarily the number okay of the glucose level does that make sense okay so mild look at your manifestations so this one of course like i said triggers sympathetic stimulation so these are the uh sympathetic symptoms right the patient goes diaphoretic you sweat um, you look pale, uh, you have tachycardia, you have tremors. So all caused by sympathetic stimulation. Moderate, now you have some CNS manifestations now. You still have the, the um, uh, what we call adrenergic symptoms, which are, these are adrenergic symptoms, the sweating, tremor, tachycardia, palpitation. We call that um, adrenergic, you know, adrenal hormones. Uh, in moderate, now you have CNS symptoms now. Inability to concentrate, the, um, you know, the term hangry, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now you have irrational or combative behavior or just, you know, plain angry. So you, you're starting to uh, feel like that. You, you feel like, you know, you want to eat me, for instance. So that's probably moderate hypoglycemia already. So always have some something to eat in class. Okay, so here, so I already said, in addition to the adrenergic symptoms, which are the adrenergic symptoms again? Sweating. The sweating, tremor, tachycardia, palpitation. Okay, when we say adrenergic, that's referring to epinephrine, norepinephrine, you know, the adrenal hormones. And then severe, patients already disoriented, possibly um, unconscious already, Okay. <clears throat> So because patients tolerate hypoglycemia differently, is it do you go by symptoms or the patient's actual glucose level? Okay, glucose level and then but then you treat based on the symptoms. Okay. So with that patient that's, that was 20 clock, 20 yeah. You yeah, I didn't have to give him dextrose or glucagon because he can eat. So you Does that make him, sense? Yeah. yeah, I got him a meal. Okay. okay. I Of course, I gave him this uh, simple sugars first and then I gave him a sandwich. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. was it necessary for him, for, for me to glucagon his ass? Not at all. <laughs> <clears throat> so here's your immediate. Now, take note, this is for immediate, okay? So the initial must address the hypoglycemia. So you give what type of um, food? No, this is, we're still in the um, mild. Carbohydrate? What type of carbohydrate? Okay, simple carbohydrate, okay? Concentrated carbohydrate. So 15 is the minimum. You can go 20, but the rule is 15, 15. So you give 15 and then check the sugar 15 minutes later. Okay, it's not necessary to add sugar to juice. I know for those who practice at the bedside, you've been told this by your nurse or maybe you're an LPN, you do this. So clearly, is it really necessary? Not really. Okay. But does it say you, you, you cannot do that? It doesn't say, it just says, so not, not necessary. Okay, but if that's your practice, yeah, you, that makes you happy. Okay, go ahead and add the sugar. Okay. Because here's the consequence. If you add sugar to it, what will happen? Now you'll have hyperglycemia, potentially hyperglycemia. Because now, remember, the patient has no insulin here, okay, or very little insulin. So now hyperglycemia can be a potential consequence or or yeah consequence of, of what you did so always do um simple sugar first of course this requires that the patient must be awake and able to swallow okay so here patients who are unconscious cannot swallow what do we have left so either we give glucagon one milligram im or sub q I am or sub Q. You know what glucagon is, right? Okay, so it usually comes either in a, you know what an EpiPen is? Okay, so glucagon, there's also a glucagon pen, <clears throat> uh, which you just you know jab, jab first, so to expose the needle and then inject, or you draw it up from uh, there's also a kit, comes in a kit, the 
the vial is there and then it comes with a um <clears throat> a small syringe and needle. Then you repeat, okay? The problem with glucagon is if you give glucagon, look at the side effect. This thing causes nausea because it's an emergency hormone. Glucagon is an emergency hormone, just like epinephrine. What will it do? What does epinephrine do? Increase your heart rate and also causes basal. Okay, it's something you have to keep in mind. When we say the patient experiences vasoconstriction, what is the body trying to do again? I explained this two weeks ago. Why does the body go into vasoconstriction during sympathetic stimulation? What is the aim or the goal of the body? Remember the statement in the book said it's trying to shunt the blood, correct? Shunt it to where? The heart, the lungs, and the brain. So what happens to blood flow to the other organs, including the pancreas and everywhere else, the GI tract and the kidneys. Basoconstriction everywhere else, but there's shunting of blood only to the three vital organs, the heart, the two lungs, and the brain. So therefore, what happens to blood flow to the GI tract? Decreases. So hypoglycemia triggers that, correct? So therefore, what happens to peristalsis during hypoglycemia or when you administer glucagon? decreases so the patient of course goes into no no movement so the patient will feel nausea so when the patient ha is expected to have nausea after giving glucagon the patient's still awake are you going to give them anything to eat if they're awake that's fine because at least when they vomit they're awake when they vomit now when this patient is already unconscious, you gave glucagon, patient is coming to, can you eat? Can you feed this patient? Not until they're fully awake. Now, even if let's say you're not giving them anything, but this patient is 80 years old, you gave glucagon, what should your knowing that they have nausea or possibly vomiting? What does the last statement say? Are we clear? So you know what to do, what your responsibilities are when giving glucagon. <clears throat> okay. The patient is um, unconscious. So your choices are either glucagon or IV dextrose. So you can have, so 25 milligrams is half of the uh, 50 ml syringe that the dextrose comes in or the whole dose is 50. So follow agency policy or the order because some hospitals do not give the whole 50. Most hospitals though, their protocol is the entire vial, 50 ml vial, but some will be only half. Okay, so follow order. Uh, of course, the entire vial have you seen a uh, dextrose 50 ml vial? Uh, okay, let's um, show you a picture. It's universal. So the vial is uh, clear. Oh. So the box is blue, but then the Here's the syringe. <clears throat> so it's clear. It has a blue lining and the end is blue and the cap is always yellow. Are we clear? This is to distinguish it from other emergency drugs because these are side by side. You have your dextrose, you have your epinephrine, you have your bicarbonate. Make sense? So on the crash cart so that people don't grab the wrong syringe because, you know, everybody's in a hurry. So these are these things are color coded. All right. So that you don't make a mistake. You meant to give uh, bicarbonate, then you grab the dextrose. <laughs> All right. Uh, between the two, I prefer the dextrose 50. I know it's hard to uh, push because it's a big syringe, but I prefer that because I don't want, I don't really like the nausea from glucagon. No, uh, my patients unconscious, they, 
it might aspirate. So I try to avoid that. I mean, if I have the choice between the two, I'll choose the dextrose. Unless, of course, my patient doesn't have an IV access, then what choice do I have? I have glucagon. Okay. So you put the both things uh, together. So you just flip the <coughs> caps. So there's two caps here. Flip them both open. And this thing, this end screws into here. There's a needle at here. You can't see the needle, but there's a needle there. And when you screw it, the needle... Um, punctures the rubber stopper here, okay, and then you can start pushing the drug. So this is a lure lock, male lure lock, and fits into your female lure lock. All these interventions we're talking about, so the food, the juices, the graham crackers, um, glucagon, and the or gluc uh, dextrose, are they permanent solutions? No. Very good. So keep in mind, these are temporary first aid interventions. So what's your more longer lasting intervention? Food. Okay. So you and me, sugar drops, what do we do? We eat, right? So same thing here. So feed the patient as soon as safe. Let's say no longer nauseous if you gave glucagon or fully awake. So you're in your uh, in prevention, of course, you know the the um, causes earlier. You know, you, you, we discussed a few of the causes. So how do you prevent it? Okay, avoid excessive exercise. And, yeah, time the insulin correctly, in, eat enough, okay? And then administer the correct insulin at the correct time. And here's more prevention. So patients should, can, cause can you predict, I mean, can you prepare for everything? No. no, let's say, can you say, oh, I'm never gonna do excessive exercise today. But then, you know, you're, you're forced to, let's say you were um, caught in a, say, uh, another 9-11 and you have to go running for your life, right? That's excessive exercise, right? Can you go hypo? Yeah. yeah, and then you'll collapse there. You'll never make it out, right? So people with diabetes should carry something simple sugar. Um, we prefer something that can, you know, withstand temperatures. So would the candy bar be advisable? No. It'll melt, no. okay? Summer, now, how are you going to eat it? And then you're already, you know, Having um, mental status changes, can you still do that? Okay. No more. I have a question about yeah. Mm -hmm. Can it blow your vein since it's like so, so high? Is that high uh, we, glucagon is again sub Q or IM. Oh, okay. So it's not through the IV. No, it's only dextrose IV. is IV. So would the dextrose blow the arm? Uh, yeah, because it's it's, it's high, hypertonic, yeah. It's a huge uh, syringe. I mean, it's hard enough to push from a 10 cc. This is a 50 cc glass syringe. So it's hard. Okay. I usually go like this. Okay, just turn it and it'll slowly push. You can't push hard either because you're, like you said, you, yeah, you could infiltrate the vein. All right, that's it for hypoglycemia. Any questions? Very good, children. Let's go now to DKA. DKA and HHS management is similar. So the only difference here would be the signs and symptoms uh, and the causes. Okay. So let's start with DKA. Both DKA and HHS uh, are hyperglycemic uh, events. Now let's start with DKA. DKA can happen to type 1 and type 2. Again, DKA can happen to type 1 and type 2. HHS can only happen to type 2 diabetics. So the nature here, the cause of death really in DKA is what? Look at this. Patients with severe DKA may lose up to 6.5 liters of water. So therefore, what's the cause of death here? 
Profound dehydration. This patient will go into shock. Can they go into AKI also? What type? Pre, intra, or post? Okay, you're getting it now. So again, this chapter only talks about DKA. Okay, so when this patient's develop AKI, is it mentioned here? It's a different chapter. Make sense? Okay, but take note that this patient with DKA will have multiple problems. Patient is also in AKI. And they could go into shock, and then we'll talk about shock next semester. Okay, so the management here, signs and symptoms and management is only for DKA. So remember, these patients will definitely go into AKI because of this severe profound dehydration. <clears throat> so the three main causes are the following, meaning there are other causes. Three main are decreased or missed dose of insulin. They got sick. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be a physical illness, by the way. It could be a emotional. So let's say um, I asked Caroline out. I'm diabetic. She said, hell no. So does that affect me emotionally? Yeah. Yes. Can that be considered illness? Yeah. Yes. I'm not physically ill, but I'm emotionally ill. Because when you're sick, what really about it raises your sugar? The stress hormone. Okay, so the cortisol levels raise the sugar. Okay, so her saying no to me, she was fine with it, but she didn't know how it affected uh, me, you know, physically. Okay, or the patient had no idea they were diabetic. They found out the hard way. They found out through DKA. Okay, they almost died in the process. All right, again, what are those three most common causes? Yeah, meaning they're diabetic, but they either did not care or, you know, not treated, for instance. So they never got their insulin. Second, they got sick. Okay, because what happens when you're sick? When you're, let's say, uh, you're not educated properly about diabetes. You got sick. You haven't been eating. So let's say I'll use me as an example. So same with Caroline, uh, our relationship. So I said which is not existing, okay? So I asked her, oh, please come go out with me. She said, hell no. Ah, and then she said a few other stuff, you know, hey, look at yourself, you're out of my league. Hey, you dare to ask me? She could have just said no, left it at that, but then she said a few other things. Okay, so I really took it hard, you know? And then my cortisol uh, went up, right? And then the sugar started going up. Um, <clears throat> so I'm diabetic. So do you think I will go about my usual treatment and diet? No. 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 So let's say I add the flu now. I got the flu. So when I'm sick, I'm not eating, I'm not drinking. Will I assume my sugar will go up or go down? Go down. Of course, that's the layman, layperson's thinking would be, right? So I will I continue to uh, get my insulin? No, I would say, oh, why bother checking my sugar? I know it's going to be low. All right. So patients, most diabetics think that way. They don't know what the effects of illness or physical or emotional is. You no know, stress. They don't, they don't understand the effects. They think that all sugar comes from food and beverage. They don't know that the human body is literally made of sugar. Okay, so we can, you know, they don't know about the glycogenesis, gluconeogenesis, or keto, uh, ketogenesis. They don't know that. So here, that's the trigger. And then the longer, the, the problem with DKA is it happens so fast. Because remember, what's the root cause here? Let's say a type 1 diabetic. What's the difference between type 1 and type 2? One is producing insulin and the other is not. Oh, yeah, type 1 produces, but no, no type it doesn't produce at all. And then type 2 has insulin, but it's not enough. So and there's also insulin resistance, correct? All right. So that's the difference, right? So remember, let's say type 1, no insulin. So therefore, will there be any intervention at all with the sugar? No. So will the sugar rise quickly or slowly? Quickly. So how long can DKA develop? 
a matter of hours. I could be fine when I woke up this morning. And then on my way here, and when she said no, I could be in DKA by noon or by 2 p.m. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so DKA progresses really quickly. Okay, I could be dehydrated before I even know what's going on. And here's the effect. So no insulin, of course, will cause my body because is it an absence of sugar or an absence of insulin? Mm -hmm. Absence of insulin. So I have enough sugar, not enough insulin. So what will my cells say? Because the sugar is in the blood. They can't enter the cell because there's no insulin. So what will the cells trigger or stimulate in the brain? Make more, you know. Make more sugar. I'm hungry. Okay. I don't have any sugar. Please give me sugar. So the body will start with glycogenesis first. Break down glycogen from the liver. That increases sugar. Will that solve the problem? No, it made the problem worse. Now the cells are still saying, hey, where is it? I asked two hours ago, where is it? Now what will the body do next? Break down fat. Okay, so now there's ketogenesis now, right? And then will that solve the problem? Makes it worse. So now what am I going to, what will the body do? Break down protein now, break down muscle. And does that solve the problem finally? That made it even worse. So now our sugar go went from like 180 to now 250. So at 250, you already have this. So patient's sugar, you can bet there's already ketones in the blood. So how much more when we get to 300 or higher? The diagnosis of DKA starts at 300. Uh, let me check what the book says because some books say 250. Uh, this one says... Is it 250? Right here, 250. Okay, so your author says 250. Others will say 300. So DKA technically uh, begins, according to this author, at 250. You are already in DKA. So did that take long or... Yeah, so this can be, again, a matter of hours, okay? So now the sugar is going high and high. So how does this go into dehydration? The answer is osmotic diuresis. I think I discussed this on week one, right? Because what happens now, your sugar levels are, let's say, 250 or up to 800, so what happens to the osmolarity of your blood, of your plasma? Hi. So what happens now to fluid shifting? Okay, it will, water will move from where to where? From the cells into, so does that cause dehydration? Okay, so it doesn't stop there, however, because now the kidneys will see an increased blood volume. What will the kidneys do? Excrete more water because of the osmotic diuresis so this is now osmotic diuresis because now the fluid shifting causes increased blood volume of course the kidneys will eliminate that so now you have your first p you have polyuria now and then the second p will be poly phagia because again the cells can't get to the sugar okay they don't know that the sugar is already in excess in the bloodstream they can't get to it because there's no insulin and then finally the third p Polydipsia, because now you're dehydrated. Okay, let's next is the um, prevention now. So how do we prevent this? How did we get to this point again? What were those three main causes? I got sick. What else? Yeah, I did not take my check my sugar or take my insulin or I had no idea I was diabetic. Okay. So, of course, between the three, which ones are preventable? Only the two. Because if I didn't know I was diabetic, how was I supposed to, to prevent it, right? So, of course, if I'm sick, I need to know what to do when I'm sick. Or if I'm supposed to be taking insulin, I should be complying. So, here's the prevention. So, there's a chart for that. This one specifically is on what to do when you're sick. The first two paragraphs, of course, tells you about the, you know, taking insulin, complying to be sure 
you know, don't assume you check, okay? Don't don't assume you check your sugar to be sure. And here, so when you're sick, eat, again, emphasize to the patient, you don't have to be physically sick. It could be emotional, okay? It could be psychological stress. Right? It happened with, with me and um, uh, Caroline. So sick day rule. So continue. If your sugar is high, even if you're not eating, take your insulin, take your metformin. All right. Test. Do not guess. Test. If you're testing four times a day, test more often now. Instead of four times a day, make it about six times a day. Okay? Check more often. And when your sugar is already uh, 250 or 300, uh, check for ketones because we expect ketones already, right? At, at that level, that means your body is already breaking down fat. So there are urine test kits available. They're over the counter. They're not expensive. So check, use that kit to check for ketones. And then once you have ketones, that's time to call your doctor. Now, if the patient is not feeling well, let's say I'm having diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, they can't keep anything solid, right? So they can advise to drink liquid nutrition. What will be the advice? What do I drink? No, the food for diabetic. What is the food for diabetics? You know, the supplement. Glucerna. Okay, don't say insure. Okay, the answer is glucerna. So you drink Lucerna if you can't take anything solid. So, you know, liquid nutrition. What if I can't take it, that, even that? I can't hold it down. Can they stay home? No. It's time to go to the hospital. Okay. Or if the symptoms, you know, you're sick. Obviously, you're septic maybe. You know, and you have other problems besides DKA. So go to the hospital. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Right. But first thing is, of course, test. Don't guess. All right. Manifestations, of course, manifestations of both dehydration and hyperglycemia. Do you remember hyperglycemia? We reviewed hypoglycemia manifestations, mild, moderate, severe. What about for hyperglycemia? So three Ps, what else? Mental status would be, what would be the, here, blurred vision, okay, weakness and headache. And with ketosis, now the patient will have, uh, because this is from the acidosis, the patient will have nausea, vomiting, anorexia, abdominal pain. And what is that older again? When they have what? This type of rest. And then they're breathing like this. Kusmols. Okay, very good. Um, so Kusmols here is a compensatory uh, response. Okay. It, uh, yeah, it, it can be called um, a symptom, but really it's not a symptom. It's it's more like a compensatory response to the acidosis. <clears throat> okay. All right. So the sugar again begins at 250, or technically 251, then it could go up to 800. Um, the sugar in HHS is way higher, uh, but uh, let me put it this way. You're in DKA at 250, but doesn't mean you stay at 250. That's, does that make sense? So there's no limit as to how high the sugar can get. Does that, you understand? Yeah. Okay, but it starts where? 250, you're technically in DKA already. Of course, the, the lower your sugar, the better the outcome. Because the amount of dehydration here is commensurate with the level of your sugar. So which patient DK, let's say we have two DKA patients. One is 250, the other the 800. Who among the two is more dehydrated? Of course, the 800 glucose level is more dehydrated over the 250 patient. So here are your findings. So signs and symptoms, select all the apply. What will you pick? Everything here. So with the, what will happen to the pH? No. Which is, give me a number. Give me a number. Okay, so less than 7.35. Okay, so anything less than 7.35 is acidosis. Again, the severity varies with the level of the sugar. So the higher the sugar, the more acidic the patient will become.
and ketones definitely. So what will be the bicarbonate levels here? If you're if you're here, what will be the bicarbonate level? So if your CO2 levels are high, that means the if you're in acidosis, the bicarbonate must be low. So between zero to, to 15, because your bicarbonate is normally what? 22, right? 22 to 26. And again, evidence of, what is this paragraph evidence of? What is the patient having besides DKA? AKI. Okay, so patient has AKI. All right, let's go to the um, management. First priority. Is it the sugar or the dehydration? Okay, yeah. ABC, very good. So ABC is priority. So circulation is priority. Uh, don't worry. It's not like there's hours in between um, giving fluids and giving insulin. All right? It's a matter of seconds. Okay, what, what, what do we hang first? The insulin or the fluids? Always fluids first. And don't worry, uh, when these people come in, the ER, usually that's where we see them. We typically don't see DKA on the floor because, I mean, they're already in the hospital. I mean, how could they go into DKA, right? I mean, yeah, unless do. we're neglecting the patient. So obviously in the hospital, we see these in the ER and then they typically get admitted to the ICU because they're in AKI, right? Um, but in the ER, first thing given is fluids. Now the question is what type of fluid is given first? So here's your answer. What's the initial? Oh, that's what Remember, we discussed this week one. So what blood sugar blood pressure is really low here. Okay, dehydrated. So what's your first initial fluid? Isotonic. Isotonic. Either LR or NS will be given first. So that's about one hour. Okay, one to two hours. Patient will get uh, one liter per hour or one and a half liters per hour. Okay. So as soon as you hang that, what's the the next thing given is right here. So I'll have to go back and forth here. So the next one you'll give is the insulin. Because why did they go into DKA again? What was missing? It was the insulin that led to the osmotic diuresis and now they're dehydrated. So therefore, you need to stop that, correct? Right? The only way to stop the acidosis is to stop the breakdown of fat, which is caused by, again, no insulin. Okay, There was no insulin. That's why the patient's body was breaking down fat, causing or forming the ketone bodies. So when you hang the fluids, it's running. You have to stop the acidosis, you stop the entire cause. So now we're going to give two insulins. First is... Um, a bolus, okay. It's given IV, so the only insulin you're giving here is regular. Okay. So let's say it's not um, specified. So let's say I'll, uh, the order is, and this could be a math question on your first exam. Let's say the doctor wrote, initial insulin will be 0 0.1 units per kilogram per hour. Uh, 0 0.1 units per kilogram. Patient weighs 70 kilograms. How much will you give IV? 0 0.1 units per kilogram. Give seven units. Okay. You've seen insulin syringes, correct? You've seen them? Can you take out the needle? No, it's attached to the syringe, right? So therefore, how do you give it IV? Are you going to put a tourniquet and then shoot it up? No. So how do we give it? Well, if you put it in the bag, that means you have to wait until the entire bag is finished before they get the seven units. So how do you give the push? Because the order is push. How do you push it? There's a needle attached to it. Okay, the answer is you go get a pre-filled syringe or saline. Um, add it to the flush okay so grab a flush maybe 5 ml or you can use 10 ml put aseptically okay both are sterile right the syringe is sterile the tip of the syringe at least and the needle is sterile put it there add it now you have seven units in maybe 5 ml or 10 ml of, of 
uh, saline and then now you can push. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So you just gave it initial. That was just the bolus. Now let's say the bolus is, um, uh, let's say it's put it here, five units per kilogram per hour. What will be the rate? Let's say the, the pharmacist sent you a bag of uh, insulin that said 250 <coughs> ml at 200, no, um, yeah, 250 units of insulin in 250 of NS. So what rate will your infusion be? Same 70 kilogram patient. Now the order is five units per kilogram per hour. I oh, know that's too much actually. Let's give it um one unit. One unit per kilogram per hour. I weigh 70 kilograms. So what would be the rate? This is an IV bag. Okay, so you spike the bag, two okay. things, put it on the pump. What ml per hour will you put on the pump? So the order is one unit per kg per hour. And you need ml per hour, obviously, right? So this is your order. This is your half. This is your H. D over H. So what would be your D? So I weigh 70 kilograms. So it would be 70. 70, 70 units. Divide by oh, one two. times one, right? So, or you can do uh, divide by two fifty okay, times yeah. two fifty, which is really one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one. Because that equals one. Yeah. So what would be my rate? Seventy. Seventy. Yeah. Did you get that? Yeah. Yeah. Very easy, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Two fifty can't divide each other because one. All right. Okay, so that's hanging. So remember the. Is the saline finished? Because you took like five minutes to set this up. No, the saline is still running. Still running. So how many pumps do you need here? Two. One for the insulin, one for the saline. One hour later. So now the first bag of saline is about to finish. What will be given next? Now we switch to half normal. Because why? What was the problem in the first place? Dehydration. So we only gave the saline to do what? To raise the blood pressure. It did not correct the dehydration. Now the cells are still? Yeah, they still look good. Okay? Because this, the saline didn't go anywhere. Not at all. The saline stayed in the, in the vascular compartment. It stayed in the bloodstream. Now you have to change the fluid to have normal saline in order to rehydrate the cells. Now question, remember interventions for hyperkalemia? There were several, right? What was one of the interventions to regular insulin with dextrose, right? So why did you give insulin in the patient with hyperkalemia? To shift it. Now you're giving insulin IV here. Will that have a different effect? Different effect? Meaning I gave regular insulin to the hyperkalemic patient, it dropped the potassium. This one, I gave the same regular insulin IV, it won't have a similar effect. So what will happen to this patient's potassium? It will drop. Now we mentioned last uh, two weeks ago, was it easy or hard to replace potassium? Because can you hurry it up? No way. Okay, you're only limited to how much per hour? 10 MEQs per hour of potassium. So are we going to wait until it drops or are we going to start replacing it? Replacing. Right. Because we know, is it a matter of if this will drop, this intervention will drop the potassium or when? when? It's going to drop it. Right? It's just a matter of time. So therefore, do we anticipate that? Yeah. Yes, because we don't want to add another problem. Now we're going to have hypokalemia. So we should, so the doctor will be informed or if the doctor hopefully uh, anticipates that, this half normal saline bag here will contain potassium. Does that make sense? And then finally, last question, 
um, how, what do we do? What do we assess before giving any potassium, whether it's by mouth or IV? What should we check? Yes. What else? Because remember, 80% of the potassium is excreted by the kidneys. Kidney. So what should you check? Kidney function first. Plus, this patient is in what? AKI. It's also in AKI. So before you give that potassium containing half normal saline, what should you check? Is it most likely that they're already having a uh, normal urine output? No. Probably not during the first couple hours, right? But just the same, if the doctor orders this, what's your responsibility? Check the urine function first. As long as it's it's still, you know, you still, because this patient has a Foley, right? So you still don't have urine output or the creatinine so high, what's your responsibility? Are you going to give that half normal with potassium? No, you're going to call the doctor. Hey, doctor, I'm a real nurse. I checked, you know, kidney function, BUN, urine output. It's not enough. Do you still want to give this potassium? I'm not. Okay, you you know, of course you don't talk like that. You don't talk obnoxiously, but you know, you just give them the data, and then they'll say, okay, yeah, you're right. Okay, let's hold off on that. Just give half normal saline. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's just continue until we uh, DKA is considered uh, resolved uh, when the sugar is already below two fifty. Okay, so when we reach that, do we continue the IV insulin? No. Is there a need for that? No, no more. So we check every 15 minutes. So if the sugar is already um, under 250, is the patient still in DKA? No. No more. So DKA is 250 to or higher, right? So no more DKA. Do we need that IV insulin? No. Call the doctor. Have him stop it. Okay. So stop that. How about the fluids? Do we still need the fluids? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay. So the patient still needs fluids. Okay. They're still in AKI. Remember, oligoric, diuretic. Okay, so obviously when they're in diuretic phase, uh, of course we adjust the rate of, of the fluids. Okay. Um, the only difference between this, uh, so here's your um, warning about the potassium, and we, which can be made worse because you're giving IV insulin. Um, the of course, this patient here talks about patient has to be on a cardiac monitor, right? So they're in telemetry or in ICU. Now, as far as the D, uh, HHS, it's really similar. The causes are similar. But what's the difference between who gets DKA again? Yes. Type 1 yes. and type 2. Who gets HHS? Yes. Type 2 only. So since in HHS, only type 2 diabetics get it. So that means, is there absolutely no insulin? No. There is enough insulin to prevent what? acidosis there's no ketoacidosis here in hhs so that's the only difference so therefore what's the difference between um dka and hhs management because both are dehydrated in fact because hhs starts at 800 i think or 600 here hhs is starting at 600 okay so here's the comparison here, DKA, HHS, really similar. Type 1 or type 2, this one. I know it says type 1, but I've never seen the type 1 go into HHS. Okay, so more common in type 2. But look at the sugar. And causes are the same. Same patient got sick, stopped taking insulin and checking. Okay, so here, rapid again, matter of hours, this one several days and the sugar is over 600. So between the two, who is more dehydrated? Um, HHS. The HHS patient is more dehydrated. So who has a higher mortality between the two? The HHS patients have a higher mortality. Plus, if you look at it, what are the patient's only manifestations here? Correct, because the patient in DKA, at least they had the what? They had a cool small, so you can tell. But the HHS patient, when you're dehydrated, do you have really symptoms? Yeah. No, you just feel tired, right? Yeah, I want to go to sleep. And then these patients will go to sleep, 
and that's it. They won't wake up. All right, so that's why they have a higher mortality. So HHS patients, uh, of course, there's no acidosis here. So the pH will be either normal or maybe slightly high. So bicarbonate could be high here. Um, but the management will be similar, except will these patients ever receive bicarbonate? No need because there's no acidosis. Uh, bicarbonate was, was it mentioned in the case? Let's see. So the bicarbonate here, if you're ever going to give it, So here, see the bicarbonate administration. This is DKA. In general, bicarbonate infusion to correct severe acidosis is avoided because is it really necessary? No. Not really. As long as you, once you drop the sugar, this will stop. This will start uh, raising the pH. Uh, although there is an exception. If the patient's um, pH is already 7, I mean, that's severe acidosis, right? Mm -hmm. So they could go into coma. So that's the only exception. The patient's already severe acidosis, you know, 7 or less, doctors will order bicarbonate. Okay, but typically they stay above 7. So there's no need for the bicarbonate. Are we clear? That's it. So you can recover from DKX as the HHS. HHS. Correct. And the fluids will be way a lot more in HHS because, again, they're more... They're more dehydrated. Okay, so who needs bicarbonate? 